Hi guys and welcome to the Euro Car Show. Today we have a very special car. As you can see behind me, there is the new Yaris GR4, the brand new car from the GR team at Toyota. This is a special homologation car. It was built for one thing and one thing only, trash any other hatchback on the road and off-road. So first of all, with this review, I want to start with the design because it's quite simple. If you know the Yaris, the regular one, you might see that, well, it's the same headlights. And once we'll go to the back, you'll see, well, it's the same taillights. Oh, and guess what? The mirrors are similar. But besides that, this car, it's basically its own car. As you might know, the Yaris, the normal one, only comes as a four-door. This one is a coupe, it's a two-door. And you know what? I don't think that anyone can argue that this car looks too much like a regular Yaris. Look at these huge entrances in the front for cooling. It's just amazing. Those are functional. They go to the brakes. Here in the front is purpose built to cool, well, the engine, the radiator and everything. So this car is a truly, well, it's really a race car, at least in my opinion. And I'll tell you more about that during the drive. But as you can see, this is a purposely built car. Look at the wheels, optional forge alloy wheels, 18 inches. You have big brakes, four pistons in the front and well, two in the back. We'll, we'll see that in a minute but it's very good brakes. I think they're bigger than the Supra's brakes and you can honestly feel it. These brakes are just, they're gonna stop you in a matter of seconds. They're so efficient and the feel is amazing. But again, we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Now let's move on to the side of this car and look at it. It looks so planted. Although this car is not right on the ground because well, rally car, uh, it's still a very low car. It has a very low roof way lower than the regular model. And as you can see, this is a carbon roof. Well, you can't really see it. This is wrapped, right? This is not the carbon, but there's carbon underneath uh, the car. It's forced carbon, it looks amazing, like on the Huracan Performante. This is the same level of construction. I, I, it's just truly amazing that you can find these things on a Yaris. Again, in the back, same wheels and two piston brakes, a bit smaller in the back. And you get sports tires all the way around, Michelin's of course, four S's of course, because this car is four wheel drive. We'll get to that in a second. Now moving on to the back of the car, you can see there's a dual exhaust, two pipes, one on each side. There's a diffuser there and the car just looks so body builded. Look how amazing this car looks. It's so wide in comparison to the normal Yaris. Quick details here, you have a tiny spoiler. Uh, I don't know if, does, if that does much. There is a slight inclination, so I would think it does something, but, but I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not going to pretend I do. Nevertheless, here's another view of the car. Look at this pocket rocket. I, I truly love it. The design, I think, is just on point for a true hot hatchback. Now, again, we'll finish the walk around of the car. As you can see, well, it's the same <laughs> as on the other side. Symmetry obliges. Again, on the front, oh my God, the front is just so menacing, so open, so sporty. I, I truly love it. I think this car is just, it does really stand out in the crowd. I mean, it's just so unique, especially nowadays when all cars pretty much look the same. Of course, keyless entry. But let's open up the bonnet and talk a bit about the engine. There it is. Where is it? It's here. Well, well, well. Moving on to the engine. Let's see if I can open it one-handed because I know it's somewhere here, but I know it's also not very easy to reach. Yes, I can. There you go, guys. Here's the magnificent 1.6 liter engine. It's of course petrol, it's turbo. And the big surprise, this is a three cylinder engine that puts out 261 horsepower and 360 Newton meters of torque. I'm not gonna take the cover off because there's not much you can see, but the cover is not too bad. I'm gonna hold the bonnet with my head. It, it's, look at this, it's really funny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you can see the GR badging here, it's a turbo, we know that the intake, which looks, well, I just fixed the intake guys. Now it's a proper intake. I don't know why it was unfixed, but yeah, now it's, it's, it's there. Anyways, we also do mechanical work on this channel. Nevertheless, yeah, this is a proper engine. It's mated to, well, a manual gearbox. Uh, you'll see that in a minute. And as I was saying, this is of course four wheel drive. We'll talk more in details about the differentials and everything that's going on underneath this car uh, once we take it for a spin. 
Now let's move on to the back actually because I forgot to show you the trunk. Let's see the trunk. It's not, it's not huge. Spoiler alert, here's the badge. The car is very dirty and I want to keep it like that because that's what this car was meant to look like. Dirty, used, properly used. This is not a show car, this is a proper driver's car. And there you can see the trunk is well. There's the bag, there's the trunk. You know, it's not huge. You can fit a couple bags, you can fit like a big bag or something like that, but no, I wouldn't recommend taking this car on a long journey if you need to, well, store many luggages. Although you could use the back seats, uh, you'll see that in a minute, as storage, because, you know what, I'll cut this short. I'm not gonna try and fit in the back seats, I just don't think I, I can. To be honest, the roof is very low and everything, I'll just try on the other side, because I have a very particular driving position and I want, don't want to mess with it, to be honest with you. Let's see, on this side. So, there you go. You can see there's actual space in the back. You could fit some human beings, smaller ones, but I don't think you can fit someone that's 190 centimeters uh, tall. Uh, it's just not gonna happen. I'm not gonna insult you or myself trying that or pretending that I can fit perfectly in this car in the back. No, it's not. But this is not meant to be a practical car. This is meant to be a race car and a race car it is. Look at the seats. Alcantara, leather, very supportive, a bit tighter than in the normal Yaris, and I just love that. Otherwise, I mean, the finitions, you get some plastic, you know, it's not, it's not gonna be a luxury car, but it's not bad, it's soft touch materials here, you have some storage and everything, and I think it does look uh, pretty good. At least in my opinion, it's a very good looking interior for a car in this segment. Now, let's move on to the driver's seat and see what's going on there. Of course, as I was saying, keyless entry, and there you have again, same situation. It's not bad, you have some metal, some stuff, you have the window controls here and some storage. I mean, it's honestly, it's very decent. And this being a purpose-built fast car, race car, I, I wasn't expecting to get all the creatures of comfort and there is many to talk about. As you can see again, the seat is a very good looking seat and a very supportive seat as well. So let's sit down in this car. Well, 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 there you go. There's the steering, and guess what? This is not a BMW anymore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, because I just had the Supra a couple days back, and all the BMW talk just gets so fucking tiring. So no, this is a pure Toyota product, and as you can see, there's it has its own GR steering wheel, which I think is very good. It's small, and it's it's not too meaty, but it's meaty enough so it can give you like a good grip on it. Uh, there's controls, lane assist, and all that. We'll talk about that in a second. And overall, you see there's again controls, volume, and all that. Now, if you look down here, you have even a heated steering wheel. You do have some stuff in this car, and I wasn't expecting to have that many options. So it's quite a good surprise. Now, looking at the center console, as you can see, there's the GR badging here. There's some cup holders, and here you have the buttons. You have the IMT for auto bleep, uh, auto rev match. You have the traction control, which is a very interesting button, and then the start stop, um, like in every other car nowadays. There's the gear lever, which is a bit raised up, and honestly, it's it's supple leather. I like it. It's it's a very nice gear lever. It feels good. It's very short. It's very direct, and there's no criticisms here as far as the gear lever goes. There you have the magic button, which we'll talk about in a minute. A volt socket, USB, heated seats for both front passengers, climate control, and again, here's some tiny storage for your phone. And there you have the infotainment system. Let's turn on the car. Press on the clutch, push the button, and it's alive. There you go. The car is alive. Now let's talk a bit about the options. Well, you have many safety options. Collision prevention, lane assist, automatic cruise control. Like there's a bunch of stuff in this car which I wasn't expecting to find, uh, especially as a standard. It's just freaking amazing. I love it. As you can see, the dash is not digital. We like that. I honestly don't, I'm not a huge fan of digital dashes. Uh, I think this is just good as it is. Okay, I do love heads-up display and this doesn't have it, but you have a central screen here, which you can put, for example, here you have fuel consumption. I just resetted it uh, before I left Brussels. Driving in traffic, dense, but very slowly. This is the consumption I got. We'll just show you that. And that's it. That's all you get consumption-wise because I don't want to talk about fuel efficiency when I'm in this Yaris. I just find it, bruh. I, I don't want to do it. Now let's move on to something nicer. Hey, the turbo. That's nice. 
Anyways, you have a regular speedometer and they're like very nice stitching on the steering wheel. Here, the infotainment system, you have sound, you have, you know, fuel consumption, all that. This is the main menu, you have a map, you can have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and all those stuff, you can have that on your Yaris. This is full touch screen, of course. And you know, it's very practical. It's not the best, the highest quality of infotainment, but honestly, I couldn't care less. Now I was talking, <clears throat> Now I was talking about the magic button here. As you can see, you can push for normal. Normal is 60 to the front and 40 to the rear. That's, uh, well, the bias as far as the power goes, the power transfer from the gearbox to the wheels. If you move to the left, you put the car in sports. And when it's in sports, it's gonna be 30 front, 70 back. And in track, which is just the best mode in this car, it's gonna be 50-50, fully locked, and, and it's just gonna be a rocket. Like, this is the mode. You can see it changes here a bit. You have track, I mean sports, sorry. You have normal, and then you have, uh, well, track, which is the, the proper way of driving this car. And I'm gonna deactivate lane assist because I really don't like it. I just wanna drive this car. And let's push back to normal. Now I think it's time to take this car for a ride because, well, it's gonna start to rain and what better weather to test drive the four-wheel drive of this car than in the rain on a backcountry road just outside of, I would say Brussels, but considering the speeds we're going to go, we're in Germany, right? We're in Germany, of course we're in Germany. You can see that. Anyways, let's go for a drive. Now I say let's go for a ride, but before that, as you can see, headroom is quite limited for someone uh, of my size. Although I sit very comfortable, legroom is more than uh, sufficient. I honestly think that headroom is not the best, although I clear, quite frankly, just I'm, I'm right there. Too bad the seat doesn't go lower. That's my only complaint, to be honest with you. And again, front visibility because of the huge mirror and the low uh, windscreen, there is indeed a limited visibility. But besides that, there is not much to criticize. Let's go for a drive. I'm not even gonna trouble you with the normal driving. I'll go straight into track mode. Let's try not to crash now. I mean, this car is just it's incredible. Like I could put it in sixth gear now and, and cruise along and I could tell you that, well, there's some wind noise and there's some tire noise and all that. I don't care. I honestly do not care and I couldn't care less about that. This car is just a machine. Like look at the downshift. It's just on point. Everything's so direct, everything's so mechanical. The way this car hooks up, it's just out of this world. This is exactly the kind of car I wanted to drive. This is exactly the kind of car I was expecting Toyota to build and they haven't disappointed at all. Let's just quickly accelerate again. Okay, that's maybe too quick. I mean, you have to hold on to this car because it will just, it pulls like crazy. I mean, it's only 262 horses. But believe me, 261, sorry, uh, <laughs> emotions. But believe me, this car is just, it's a monster, it's a rocket. Oh my God, such an incredible drive. Like, holy shit, Toyota. Well, I'm not even gonna pretend I don't like this car, there's anything, I don't, okay, fuck it. I, I love this car and if I had the money, have, if I had the mid 30 something thousand euros this car requires so that I, I can acquire it, I would pay it in heartbeat. You could say, yeah, oh, there's so many other cars that you can buy at this price range, but none of them can do that so fucking fast. Like, this is incredible. I don't see, I, I do you see myself moving? It's just, it's crazy. Let's launch this car. Oh my God, let's just launch, let's go. My phone literally flew off. Like, it's so crazy. Okay, that's enough, that's enough. Holy shit. Well, there you go, guys. It, <laughs> holy shit. It, sorry, it's hard not to giggle. Like You saw my phone flying out there. Like, I'm just gonna put it somewhere else because that's definitely not safe. Like, stop holding me like this, please. Let me change gears. Okay, let's put it here where it's a bit more uh, safe. Now, come on, uh, this car is, it's incredible. It's just, 
holy shit holy shit it hooks up it breaks and i mean mind you there is rain outside and this car just it couldn't care less it's just yeah so what yeah there's rain of course but i don't care i'll just hook up and give you amazing performances is this a five second car 200 kilometers per hour yes 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 it is like there's no doubt about it i haven't timed it like a professional but believe me it feels faster than five seconds to 100. It feels as fast as the Supra 3 liter, sometimes even more. It's just so brutal the way it just launches. I, I love it. I love it. It's just, it's a perfect car. It's a perfect sports car. That's all you need. You have lightness, you have directness. It's very mechanical. Everything's on point. Everything's well built and everything's under warranty. <laughs> now, could you daily this car? Let's pretend I'm driving it normally, right? Yeah, you could, but I wouldn't recommend you to like, it's not a great daily. It has all these options and everything, but it's still quite rigid. It's a bit noisy and all that. You know, I wouldn't say this is the best daily car you could buy. Even though you might want a hot hatch as a daily driver, I don't think you want this hot hatch as, as a daily driver. But if you want one of the most purpose-built hot hatches on the market, here it is. I, I mean, there's the car. There's nothing else, in my opinion, that can rival it. It's just so raw. And you can redline it to 7,000 and it just goes. Is there a lag at lower RPM? A bit. But do I care? No, because once you're off, you're never going to be under uh, 3 4,000 RPM. And even though it pulls starting at 3,000, which is still low considering the size of this engine, I mean, this is just a beast and it pulls to the red line and it goes and it goes and it goes and... Oh, it's hard not to be enthusiastic about this car. I need to calm down a bit. What's my opinion regarding this Yaris GR4? Is this a good car? Of course, the brakes squeak a bit. <laughs> is this a good car? Of course, it's a good car. It's one of the greatest cars on the market today. I'm not even gonna pretend I'm not in love with this car and if I could afford it right now, I would buy it without any hesitation. I'm not saying that because I'm paid by anyone. I'm not, sadly, otherwise I would be able to afford it and for buy it, but there, that's another uh, discussion. Honestly, it's just, it's just an amazing car. It's just the way it is. It's fast, it's very, very responsive, it's very involving. It's a bit tiring if you drive it all day long. Again, as a daily, I tried it, I wouldn't, it's fine, but I wouldn't recommend it if you really want a comfortable daily. But if you're in the performance and if you want a car that will perform no matter if it rains, snows, if there is mud or if you're on a racetrack, this is the car to get. Holy shit, this is just... Holy shit, that's the, that's the word. Holy shit, that's all I have to say. This car is holy shit. Now, I'm not just gonna keep this review and do it like a 50 minute review of every, no, it's done, I'm done, I don't have anything else to say except that this is one, if not the greatest car I've driven so far, at least involvement wise and fun wise, it's not the fastest, but it's definitely the most fun I've had in such a long time. I think it would only compare to the M2 and I would bet that this on the track would be as fast, if not faster than an M2 with the same driver behind the wheel. I'm not saying like a racing specialized 20 years of experience race driver. No, I'm saying someone like me, I, I can get out so much more out of this than I could ever get out of anything like, well, the M2, right? So there you have it. This is to me the best hot hatch. This is to me one of the greatest cars in the past 10 years. I'm not talking supercars. I don't care about those, but regular car, maybe even in the 20 years. I, it's just amazing. I love the GRMN, but it was front wheel drive, supercharged, different feeling. But this is just, this is, 
this is the one you have to get. And that's all I had to say about the GR4 Yaris. If you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you didn't, just insult me in the comments. That will still help me a bit. Or if you really hate me, just pass your way. Just, But it's too late now because you've already watched this video and I made a couple cents. Yeah, I'm rich now. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, make sure to like this video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave a comment. I'll reply to all of them. If you want to be up to date with all those reviews and new cars I'm getting, uh, please follow us on Instagram at the Euro Car Show. I do stories and pictures and all that, you know, Instagram stuff. Uh, and make sure, of course, to subscribe to this channel and help us get more cars to review, uh, more variety, and especially more cars like this Yaris, because this car ruined me for many other cars. <laughs> I just have to say it like that. It's, it's just that good. That being said, I'll see you next time with the next car in the next review. Bye. No, wait, it's ciao. That, that's my catchphrase at the end, right? Let's not miss that next time.